Welcome back to Echo Ridge here on our max difficulty achievement run. Today we're starting off with some dig commands. We're going to clean this whole area up and get it ready for some sort of tank expansion. Although we're not exactly sure what that's going to look like because there's a small problem with the future of our colony. And it has to do with the saltwater geysers here. We have three total water sources on this planetoid. One being a cool salt slush geyser that's giving us brine at minus 10 C. And then we have two saltwater geysers erupting at 95 C. One in the top right here and the other in the bottom left. The issue is we can't get near them at the 95 C they're currently erupting at. And I'm sure you've seen by now, there are no Drekos living on this planetoid. Additionally, there's no swampy biomes, so we don't have a chance of getting thimble reed that way either. And in order for us to get Atmo suits and start using the Atmo suit checkpoints that we'll need to be able to tame those 95 degree geysers, we're going to need reed fiber. So it's about time for us to head off to the second planetoid and see if we can find some Drekos or some thimble reed over there. But just because we're going to be paying attention to that planetoid this episode doesn't mean that dupes can't do a little bit of digging and cleaning up over here on our home colony. But don't get your hopes up too much, because our connected planetoid in Inverilin doesn't have a swampy biome either. In fact, of the biomes that it has, none of them naturally come with Drekos. So we're not going to be able to get reed fiber that way, but I figured it'd be worth going to take a look just in case, because otherwise it means we're actually going to take a rocket to go get a Dreco or a Reed Fiber on a different planetoid, all without an Atmo suit. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Now we have the chore of figuring out who we're going to send. Typically, you want to send a digger. Unfortunately, our only digger is DK Oz, and so I'd kind of rather leave him on this planetoid. The next logical options would be either Gave Up or Sulfur Star because typically your mechatronics engineers are pretty good at building, and that could be helpful. But neither one of them have an interest in digging. We can't take the ranchers because they're needed here. The researcher is too valuable, plus they need to do research here as well. So I think it might be time to recruit another dupe, because if I can find another digger, I wouldn't mind so much sending DK Oz. So hopefully this next pod cycle is going to have a good dupe for us. The other thing we're going to be looking for on the other planetoid is metal. We don't have a lot of it here, and we've pretty much gotten every piece that was available on the planetoid. Not counting, of course, the uranium ore and these little chunks of wolframite. For one, we need aluminum or some other refined metal in order to keep our power control stations going. And the power control station giving us the bonuses to our power generators has been hugely critical, helping to ensure that dupes don't have to run on wheels. Speaking of which, we're going to take what little refined metal we do have and change this system over from two jumbo batteries over to a smart battery. While this is 100% a runoff hydrogen generator, it has plenty of storage available in the pipes that we should be able to save that hydrogen and only use it when the batteries need it. Because as you can see, right now we're almost at 40 kilojoules and this hydrogen generator is still pumping away. Unfortunately, the pod didn't work out and about the only thing it had was a little bit of barbecue. While we sit and wait for more pods, we're also going to have the dupes pick up after all their digging and do a little low priority sweeping. That should definitely keep them busy for at least a dozen cycles. And one of the reasons why is because labor is still sort of at a premium. Ranching is continuous. DK Oz has to squeeze in a massage here and there. And then we're still doing all the farming of all the mealwood. And this sort of farming is very labor intensive. But because we're sitting up over 224,000 calories, I figured it'd be a decent time to start scaling back on some more mealwood. The next pod came and I was considering this Trivaldo. They have both digging and suit wearing, which could be handy, although they do snore loudly. Being a loud sleeper is not necessarily a bad thing, because we could just put them on a schedule to make sure they're the only one in the barracks sleeping to make sure that when they're sleeping, their snoring's not going to be keeping anybody up. And despite that, we're still not going to be taking Trivaldo. Because, yeah, they do have the digging we want, they really don't have much else going for them. You don't really need a doctor who can dig. So because we can be patient and take our time, we're going to pass and just grab the coal for future use. Another small update I wanted to give you was on the status of this liquid vent. As you can see, it does go into overpressure mode, although it waits a little bit too long for comfort. While it's only one ton of water per tile up here, down here the pressure is increased to 1,080 kilos, which means we're going to put a hydro sensor into place. And once this tile has 500 kilos in it, 
we'll make sure we turn this vent off and that way we don't ever have to worry about overpressure issues and any of these tiles here cracking. Pod number three was a big old no. Mima's not a bad farming rancher, but we already have a couple of those and we're just looking for a digger. We're gonna take a quick break from all the chaos because I wanted to let you know that our merch store is finally up. We've got zipper hoodies, pullover hoodies, sweatshirts, t-shirts, even some beanies, hats, some drinkware, and some stickers. We also have plenty of colors and sizes available. If you like a looser fit, go one size up. Make sure you check those sizes carefully as there are no refunds for sizing issues. There's even international shipping and a pretty quick printing and processing time. So if this is something you're interested in, head on over to shop.echoridgegaming.com. Pod four, once again, a giant no. So remember when I said there was plenty of storage here for this hydrogen generator in the pipes, that way we wouldn't have to worry about the overflow? Yeah, I was wrong. We are completely backed up, which means in just a minute, we're gonna start seeing hydrogen in our oxygen lines. So we're gonna add an overflow alert system here. And here's what that system looks like. We have a gas pipe element sensor here set to hydrogen. So whenever there's too much hydrogen in this line and it has to overflow past this bridge input, the element sensor is gonna detect it. We have a very long automation signal being sent all the way up here that tells the hydrogen generator to turn on no matter if it needs the power or not. That hydrogen will then spill off onto the main line once this one is vacated. It kind of looks a little confusing with the bridges smashed together like this, but expanded out, it sort of looks like this. Normally, the hydrogen is going to come down this line, take this bridge, and just head on to the hydrogen generator. When it overflows, it bypasses this input, the element sensor picks it up, and then it'll go into this bridge, where it'll eventually also head off to the hydrogen generator. This way just makes it a sort of clean, compact solution. But now we don't have to worry about the hydrogen overflowing and messing up our wonderful little spawn. Yeah, it was a bit more than I wanted to spend in automation wire, but with each wire only costing five kilos, it wasn't too bad. I'm still surprised that the hydrogen generator wasn't able to burn off all that power, because I even started putting our efforts into rock crushing all the poke shell molts, all the eggshells, and all the fossil to start creating us some lime. Speaking of poke shells, we have quite a few around the map. We're gonna go ahead and consolidate all of them up here to this point. Once they're dropped off, we're gonna deconstruct this tile and they're all gonna fall right here into this wonderful tank where we're also dropping off all the polluted dirt that we create. Now we're not ranching them or anything, we're just using them as a convenient way to get rid of all the polluted dirt and rot piles. We're sort of doing a lot of these little side projects as we're just continuously waiting for the pod to print us out a digger. Some of you may be wondering why we're storing them in the salt water and not the regular water. And that's because I don't want them eventually turning into sandy shells. And when poke shells are thriving in regular water, their chances of doing that are much, much higher. Now, they'd be able to make us the same amount of sand from the polluted dirt, but they would also drop raw shellfish. That's a pretty good thing, right? Except I'd rather have the standard poke shells so they drop the poke shell melt and give us a continuous source of lime. It's not a lot, but that combined with them eating all the polluted dirt that we are creating every once in a while from the water sieve, the system works out pretty well. Now, right now we're having to sweep the polluted dirt, but as soon as we get all the poke shells here, we're gonna put a door system here to where all the polluted dirt will be automatically dropped off. But the reason why the door is necessary is because otherwise they would just continuously go grab the polluted dirt and drop it right back off at the automatic dispenser. Looks like we got them all, so we're gonna go ahead and deconstruct this tile, and then the poke shells can all fall down to the wonderful lobster tank. And last thing to do is put in the pneumatic door and uncheck sweep only on the automatic dispenser. So all the polluted dirt and rot pile from around the colony will be picked up, thrown in here. It'll drop here through the pneumatic door where the lobsters will be more than happy to eat it. And finally, after four, maybe even five pods, this may here has digging and operating. And their only negative is they're a little gastrophobic. Welcome to the colony, duplicate number 13. Carol. With Carol in the colony, it means we do have a hard digger, so I have no problem sending DKRs over. Now they do have a morale requirement of nine because they have all the way up to super duper hard digging and both improved carries. I'm not 100% sure we're gonna be able to hit a nine morale requirement. We'll put in a small bedroom, we'll put in a small bathroom, but we'll see when we get over there. It's always exciting going to look at some other colonies, but before we go, I'm gonna save another fork. And the reason why I'm doing this I've been told that if there happens to be a coal generator on that other planetoid, 
it won't necessarily invalidate our super sustainability. It will do it if we end up putting coal in that generator. But just to make sure, we're going to save it. Enjoy your trip, good buddy. And here we are. So far, everything looks pretty standard around here. We started in the sandstone biome. We have a little bit of water here, so we will be able to run some initial toilets. And there is some algae, so we will be able to run an oxygen diffuser. Now, there's no really natural water supply, but in the far future, we may be able to tame the hot polluted oxygen vent and the infectious polluted oxygen vent and provide duplicates on this colony oxygen that way. That's going to be a long time, though. We also start off with 17 kilos worth of nutrient bars, which equates to about 13 and a half thousand calories. So we have about six and a half cycles worth of food. We'll dig up this area here. This spot looks just fine for a ladder. And I think we'll be able to put a pitcher pump right here. And I don't really trust that sand. So we're going to put a nice little tile right there. And then we'll put the pitcher pump right there. The great thing is there is a bunch of copper ore over here. Which is going to come in handy over on that other planetoid. Our first priority is going to be building the outhouse. Right now DK Oz's bladder is 45% full. So we should be able to build it in time. Their stress level is already at 51% because they live at around 50%. But if they start urinating themselves, it's going to get real bad real quick. And it looks like that sand is actually holding. So I'm fine with just leaving it there. DK Oz built their bathroom and then proceeded to use it. We also have some muckroot that we're finding throughout the biome, so we will not be limited by that six and a half cycles after all. We also managed to put in their cot, so we will be getting the plus one to morale for the barracks. And by tomorrow night, they'll have a great haul as well. Well, if I can find a plant to put in it. I'm sure one of these buried objects will have a plant. That is a lot. And if we use our database and go to the sandstone page, you can see that we're going to find all sorts of things like bristle blossoms, bluff briars, mealwood, muckroot hatches and maybe even shine bug eggs i don't know if i've ever found one buried but that's the name of the game for dk oz we're gonna be doing a lot of exploring well that and stressing out they're stressing out right now because of the low morale that we predicted but if we can hurry up and find a plant that should help all right so far no good so we're gonna have to go to plan b and that is to make sure the doors are locked so they can't get to the ration box because dk oz is a binge eater. After the morning nap, we were able to put down the massage table. Now DK Oz just has to charge the battery so they can get onto the massage table. Their stress is down to about 77% because they did have a binge eating episode, but I think because there was no food out here, they weren't able to binge eat anything. But it still gave us the stress reduction as if they had. But this also works. Unfortunately, because the massage table is not in a massage clinic, they're only getting minus 30% to stress. Well, that still gives us overall a 20% increase per cycle. We really need to find a bluff briar seed. And we found two! This is perfect! Now DK Oz thinks it's break time, except we're not going to do break time yet, because we really need to get these briar seeds planted. Then they'll get the plus six to morale, because they'll be in a great hall, which should help fend off that stress. Now what's going to happen first, I don't have a clue because they're already at 100. They're also starving. Okay, I think we're out of hot water. Because this is now a massage clinic, their massage is giving them minus 60% per cycle, which is just what the doctor ordered. With stress sort of taken care of, we're back to making this a little bit of a home. Now what you see here are the only deposits of algae that are going to be on this planetoid. And remember, algae tiles aren't very big to begin with. So when we dig this 190 kilo tile up, for instance, we're only going to get about 95 kilos in return. And the oxygen diffuser requires 550 grams per second. But we only have one duplicate, and they're going to be breathing 100 grams per second. So let's see if we can predict how long we'll be able to stay here, at least while we're surviving off of algae. Because of the ratio of algae to oxygen, we know that every 100 grams of oxygen is going to require 110 grams worth of algae. And being that we also know that DK Oz is going to be breathing for 600 seconds every cycle, we can take the 600 and multiply it by 110 grams of algae. And the math comes out that every cycle we're here is going to require 66 kilos worth of algae. What this effectively means is that our burn rate, or the rate at which we're consuming the algae, is 66 kilos per cycle. Once we get all of this dug out, we'll be able to find out exactly how long we'll be able to stay here, at least while supporting DK Oz and their oxygen needs off of algae. Digging through the, all this area was probably 
a little foolhardy because of all the water. DK Oz has gotten sopping wet and now they're really upset. We're back up to 92% stress. We're up at 100 and they managed to get into a little bit of the nutrient bars. So we've once again locked the door. I mean, at this point, they're spending more time in the massage clinic than they are doing any sort of job. I think one thing will help is putting the duplicates back on a two downtime break. This will give them plus one to morale versus the zero they were getting before. In between rounds in the massage table, we're also starting to put down some planter boxes and plant some mealwood. Not that it's going to matter much because we may have to go home sooner than we expected. We only have 3,300 galleries worth of muckroot left. Eventually, we'll be able to tame a liquid sulfur geyser that's somewhere on this planetoid and start raising some sweetles or even some grub fruits themselves. But that's a long ways away. Our first harvest of mealwoods came in, which has given us another cycle in order to be able to find some food. Now, we did have to go make sure DK Oz's priorities were flat. And what I mean by that is that they don't prefer doing one thing or the other. Well, other than the way Oxy Not Included does priorities, which is left to right from attacking to storing. We did this, that way they would actually do things like you know, clean the outhouse. Otherwise, they'd be happy just doing all the digging and building and never get around to the outhouse. So we put the outhouse on a six, along with all the mealwoods. Just realize that we're gonna run into another problem because it's really cold. Partly because there's two abyssalite breaks, one on this biome here and another one on this one here. And if you're wondering why, it's because this is a point of interest building. When the game figures out that Invaralin is the connected asteroid, it needs to put all these things in. So it plops it to include the sandstone biome that it comes with right where it can. And that may be what caused these abyssalite breaks to begin. So we probably aren't gonna be growing mealwood for much longer either. I also wanted to give you an update on the algae. You can see we've gotten some of it out, but still have plenty more to get. But so far we've unearthed about six tons. So if we take 6,000 for instance, just as a general round number, and divide it by 66, which is our burn rate of algae, that's enough for 90 cycles. Not shabby considering we have more pockets of it as well. Meanwhile, over on our home planetoid, this is exactly why I was adamant about making sure we have a digger with hard digging. Except right now it appears Carol is sleeping. Carol, wake up. Thank you. Yay, more meal lice. Except this whole time I just realized DK Oz wasn't allowed to eat meal lice. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. And we're already starting to get the body temperature issues that we knew were gonna happen. So I think it's time to relocate all the mealwood. Now this 10 mealwood will be enough to feed DK Oz indefinitely. Well, at least until our 60 tons of dirt ends up running out. So it looks like this is just about the amount of exploration we're gonna be able to get in. DK Oz is down to 846 calories and there's no more to be found. The meal ice is coming, but it's gonna be a few cycles before it's ready, unless... Why don't we go ahead and kill this hatch, allow DK Oz to eat the meat, and that should give us enough time before the meal ice kicks in. Ah yes, hatch sushi. Just what they wanted. Absolutely delicious. On the good news though, we found DK Oz a wonderful confetti suit. Don't they look absolutely happy? Well, maybe not right now, but I'm sure they're happy to have a new clothes. Everybody loves a little retail therapy, huh? Our next batch of meal ice has come in, and now we're sort of sustainable. As long as we can keep DK Oz's stress down, these meal lice will keep them alive. And I've already shown you that we have well over 100 cycles worth of algae on this planetoid as far as oxygen goes. So now it's just all about exploration. But notice we haven't found any Drekos or Thimble Reed. Not that I expect that we will. So it looks like it's time to start researching our space program. And DK Oz has reached the left side of this planetoid. So we've now unearthed the entire bottom. So next it'll be all about sort of building up. Not that we'll get too far because this is the flipped asteroid. So we know this is all magma. The last little area we want to build in this starting biome is this ladder here. It's about as high as we can go before we start breaking through the abyssalite. Not a big deal, but I just wanted a quick peek just to make sure there's nothing surprising in this area here. And as DK Oz has been power building over there, we have run into a small issue. We are completely out of igneous rock. And igneous rock is what we were feeding all the hatches. So now it's time to switch over to granite. Luckily, we have over 700 tons of it, but it was still not a great feeling to come back over to the planetoid and realize, oh, all the stone hatches are starving. 
which also means they haven't been laying eggs as regularly. We finished exploring up here, so now we're just gonna keep digging through. And so far, all we have found is exactly what we expect. A lot of sand, some grub fruits, and some more sweetles. It'll also give us access to the supply teleporter output. The input is a little bit more difficult to get to. It's right here in this cold biome. The good thing though is, once this area gets too cold for meal ice, we'll be able to start growing it up here. And the temps here, especially at the lower portion here, are just fine, sitting at around 21 degrees. We've also unlocked another colony achievement, and if I were to guess, I'm gonna say this is super sustainability. And I guessed wrong. We've unlocked pulling back the veil, which is just revealing 80% of a map by exploring outside of our starting biome. That was over on a home planetoid, and I'll show you that here in a minute. As far as super sustainability goes, we're getting pretty close and only need about 23,000 more kilojoules. But this is the damage we've done to our home planetoid. We're currently building what's eventually going to be our spaceport. And you may wonder why we've put all these multiple layers of regular tile and not just ladders like we normally do. And the reason is because of the radiation here. Not only are we playing on maximum difficulty so dupes can get radiation sickness a lot easier, and the damages are much more severe, but this planetoid just happens to have a lot of cosmic radiation. So as we dig over, we're putting a couple of layers of granite, and it helps by reducing those rats to just about nothing. We'll probably eventually put a final layer of insulated tile or something, but for now, this'll do. And we're gonna need this spaceport in a more serious way than you may think. While it's true that yes, we have 636 tons of granite and some more materials on the other planetoid, with 40 hatches eating 140 kilos per cycle, that's 5.6 tons per cycle. Which means in about 125 cycles, we'd also run out of granite. Yeah, we could start turning all this magma into igneous rock, but that normally takes the use of a steam turbine, and we don't have access to plastic, because once again, we don't have access to oil, or any beautiful glossy dracos. We're just about done with all of the tier 2 research, which means it's time to get started on material study research. Doing that will require radiation, which we have a decent amount of, so that's not a huge deal, but we've sort of hit that port, where we have to get moving, we have to get to space, and that way we have access to more materials, which will help increase our sustainability. But once again, it all comes down to the one thimble reed. It doesn't look like there's a mysterious Draco sitting over here, and there certainly wasn't any over here. Which means we need to build a space program, land on a planetoid, grab a thimble reed or a Draco, and come all the way back without an Atmo suit. Which means we're going to be building a crafting station and oxygen masks. Yeah, I can't believe it either. But all of that ridiculousness is going to have to wait till next episode. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this colony and its future plans, so make sure you show the video some love and leave a comment below. I'd also like to know what you think about the new merch store, even if you don't plan on buying anything. Head on over there and take a look. So until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.